Okay, this will be the solutions to our review quiz 4.2. In our first problem, we are asked to find the equation of the line tangent to the graph of g at x equals 5. And we were told that g of x is equal to this part here. And so we know that the equation of the line tangent is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we're given that x1 is 5. And so now we need to find m and we need to find y. And just like our traditional methods of going through, if we have x, do we need to plug in to find y? And we're going to plug in here. So we're going to have g at 5 is equal to the integral from 0 to 5 of f at t dt. And this is going to be where we find our area. And do keep in mind that when we have it defined like this, this is implying area for us. So we need to find the area, the bounded region from 0 to 5. And when we do so, we're going to find this area here and, and up until this area here. Now notice we have more area bounded below the x-axis than above, so we should have a negative value. So for this first portion here, we do have a trapezoid, and so we're going to do one half the height, which is going to be this portion here, which is 1, times the sum of the bases, which is going to be 1 plus 2, so that's going to be 3. So I know that portion there is going to be 3 halves. Now over here, I'm going to go ahead and divide this up into a triangle, and that portion down here, we're going to have 1 half the base, which is 2, times the height, which is 2. And so that's going to give me 2, but since we're bounded below, we're going to make that a negative 2. And then for this other portion, this is going to be a trapezoid here. And so for that portion there, we're going to uh, do 1 half the height, and that's going to be on its side, so that's going to be 1, times the sum of the bases, which is going to be 2 plus 1, so 3. And so notice we get 3 halves here. And so that bounded below is negative 3 halves. So if we combine all of that together, that's going to give us negative 2. So now we have our y value of negative 2 here. Now the next part we need is m. So again, this was our y1. Now for the m, that's going to be talking about g prime at 5. And so we do need to remember that g is defined to be this accumulating function. So we can say g prime at x is going to be equal to f at x. So that means g prime at 5 is equal to f at 5. And f at 5, that is going to be from the graph itself. So that's going to give us negative 1. And so now we have all the pieces to find our answer. We're going to have y minus y1. So that's going to be plus 2 equals our slope, which is negative 1 times x minus 5. And if we look at our answer choices, we see that's going to give us answer choice E. Our next problem is going to be a U substitution problem. And so to review that, we're going to let U be x cubed plus 5. So du dx is going to be 3x squared. And we are going to solve for dx. So we're going to have du over 3x squared equals dx. And now we can go back in and substitute what we have. So I know I had x squared there. That's going to be u to the sixth. And in place of dx, we're going to put du over 3x squared. We see that the x squareds will cancel. That 3 is going to be moved out front. So I have 1 third times the integral of u to the sixth du. And so when we integrate that or find the antiderivative here, we have 1 third times, and that's going to be u to the seventh divided by 7 plus c because I don't have endpoints. So it looks like we're going to have 1 over 21 times x cubed plus 5 
I'll raise to the seventh plus C. So again, we're going to have answer choice E. Okay, for our next problem, and this one's kind of um, a strange problem. We're asked to find the derivative here, and we have f of g of x. So if I want to do the derivative of f of g of x, I'm going to need the chain rule here. So that's going to be the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function. And notice that the only function we're given here is f of x. So g of x and g prime of x are going to stay in our answer. So if we look at f prime of x, that's going to give us 2x. And so if we try to find this portion here, f prime of g of x, then that means that I'm going to substitute g of x in for x. So I have 2 times g of x. And so that's about all we can do. And so I know this portion here is going to be equal to 2 times g at x and then times g prime at x because there's nothing else we can do with that. And that's going to be answer choice D. Okay, for our next problem, we are going to plug in 0 here. And so for our limit, and let's look at what happens with this limit. We have as x approaches 0. And we're going to have e to the 0 minus 1 over 0. So notice that's going to generate 0 over 0 for us. So here we need to do L'Hopital's rule. And with L'Hopital's rule, we're going to have the limit as x approaches 0. But now we're going to do the derivative of the top over derivative of the bottom. And so that limit is going to be e to the 0, which is 1. So we have answer choice C. And this next problem is a PVA problem. And so with PVA, keep in mind that you are given position and you're asked about velocity. So you have to move down this chain. So we have to do the derivative. And so the velocity function is going to be the derivative of our given position. So that's going to be 2 times t minus 6. I'm going to set that equal to 0 because we're asked for the time t when the velocity of the particle is 0. We're going to solve this equation and we're going to get the time to be 3. Here we have another problem dealing with chain rule. And with chain rule, again, we have to find h prime at 1. But in order for us to find h prime at 1, we really need to know what h prime at x looks like. And again, that's going to be our chain rule. So we have the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And now we know that we're trying to find h prime at 1. So I'm going to have h prime at 1 equals f prime of g at 1 times g prime at 1. And so here g at 1, well, we know the function g right here. So g at 1 is going to be 3. So now we need to find h prime at 1 is f prime at 3 times g prime at 1. And so uh, for here, f prime at 3, that's talking about the slope of that line segment. And we know it's that line segment because we're talking about when x is 3. So the slope of that line segment is going to be, and again, I'm going to continue this h prime at 1. That's going to be negative 2 minus 4 over 4 minus 1. And then times g prime at 1, we'll notice that g prime at x it's just going to be 2. It's a constant value because you have a linear function. So you know that's going to be 2. So h prime at 1 is going to be negative 6 over 3 times 2. So that's going to give us negative 4. So that's going to be answer choice A. Okay, for our next um, problem here, we are given the original function. And we are asked about which of the following could possibly be the derivative. So a few things to note here that are important. One would be the fact that we do have a tangent line, and that tangent line is going to be 
uh, let's see, here and also here. So that means that in both of those places, that means that we're going to have a derivative of zero. So I know in those two places, f prime is zero. And so graphically, that means you're crossing on the x-axis. So down here, we need to make sure we have two places that we're crossing the x-axis, and one's going to be in this area, and one's going to be over here. So notice we can't have answer choice A or B. That's not going to work. Now, the rest of those, C, D, and E, do look like they cross. So here, this is crossing two places. Same here and here. So um, we've got this down to maybe a 33% chance. So let's go back up. And notice that your function on this side of that x-intercept, this is increasing. So let's make us a note here. We see that f is increasing. So f prime is positive. So that means graphically we are above x-axis. Okay, so let's go look and see. Well, from C, I'm not above the x-axis over here. This is below, so I've lost C now. Now we're up to 50-50. And so notice here we're above, and here we're above. But notice this looks like it's starting to turn and go back another direction. But if we look at our graph, our graph would not be changing directions. It looks like this is going to continue to decrease. So it looks like we can throw out answer choice D. And so that leaves us with E. Okay, our next problem, we are told that we are looking for uh, places where F is not differentiable. And a big glaring point is going to be right there because you're not continuous. So you know x equals zero has to be one of those places. So already that gets rid of uh, answer choice C. Now to get the other answer choice, notice right here we are told that we have a vertical tangent at the point to zero. A vertical tangent, anytime you hear that, you need to think of f prime. And notice that vertical, that means that that slope is undefined. So that's going to be your other point, and so that's going to be answer choice B. For our next problem, it's a good idea just to sketch your information that you're given. Now, you're not going to have enough to do a perfect graph of this, but you've got enough information to help. You have the order pair 2, negative 5. Then you have the point 5, 5. And then you're over here at negative 9. You're back down here at 5. So looking at this first part, it says f has at least two zeros. So if f has at least two zeros, that means this crosses the x-axis twice. So I have to have two zeros. Well, if this function is differentiable, then I automatically can assume that the function is continuous. So if my function is continuous, no matter which way I need to go with this, and this function can do all kinds of strange stuff, but I know I have to cross the x-axis twice. So that one is true. That one's okay to be true. So that gets rid of A. Now, the graph has at least one horizontal tangent. Well, as long as, in here, notice that you've got two x or two y values that are the same at two different x values, and you are differentiable. So that means that at these places where it's turned, it has to be a smooth turn. It can't be anything pointed there. So that's going to tell you, yeah, you can have at least one horizontal tangent. That's not going to tell you where it's at, but it guarantees you have at least one. So one and two are correct. Now for three, three is wanting us to investigate the y values. It's saying just look here on the x-axis between two and five. So I have here at 2 and here at 5, 
And I know the y values, we're going to look, our y values here are going to extend. We've got 2 and we've got 5. So notice that inside this little boxed area, here's the highest it goes. Can I have a y value of 3? And so notice that we're really going, if we look at our y values, we're going from negative 5 all the way up to positive 5. 3 is between those. So yeah, that'll work also. So this is going to be answer choice E. Okay, for our next problem, we are looking for the slope of the line tangent. So again, that keyword slope, that means derivative. And we really need that derivative value at negative 1. So if we're doing, just a quick reminder, if we're doing the derivative of the natural log of, and we're going to call this stuff, then that derivative is going to be the derivative of stuff over stuff, stuff prime over stuff. And so right here is the stuff. And so you automatically know the denominator for this. So y prime is going to be 1 minus x. The derivative is going to go on top, and the derivative of all that is negative 1. So y prime evaluated when x is negative 1, that's going to be negative 1 over 1 minus negative 1. So that's going to give us negative 1 half. So answer choice B. Okay, so for number 11, again, we're given here that we are integrating that derivative. So that's really going to undo everything, and that's going to leave us with f at 4 minus f at 0, and we're told all of that is equal to 8. So if we knew what f at 0 was, we could find f at 4. And notice they tell us that f at 0 right here is going to be 5. So that's going to be f at 4 minus 5 equals 8. So f at 4 is going to be 13. And that's going to be answer choice E. Okay, for our next problem, we are told that we need to evaluate g at 2. And notice that we are given g of x is defined to be the integral from 1 to x of f at t dt. And again, keep in mind this, again, that notation is talking about area. <clears throat> We're also told that this shaded region here is 2. So now the question is, to find g at 2, well, that's going to be the integral from 1 to 2 of f at t dt. And so that's talking about this shaded region here. Now, they, it can be just straightforward too, surely not, um, but it's pretty close. Keep in mind that you are bounded below the x-axis, and so since it's below the x-axis, it's actually going to be negative 2. So that's answer choice B. Okay, this problem was just something else here. Um, but let's look at how to work on that. Um, this one here, we're going to actually move our function to the outside of this, and we're going to say that we're really looking for f of the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus x squared. And so let's break that apart. That's going to be the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared. And so here we're looking at f of, well, the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 is still 1 minus the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared, which is really coming from this graph here. So as I approach 0 from the left and from the right, notice that both sides are approaching 2. And so now I'm really talking about f at negative 1, and f at negative 1 is going to be 3. So that's going to be answer choice C. Okay, for our next problem, again, more integration here. And so we are integrating, and this is going to be 5 e to the 2x plus the integral of 1 over x. 
All right, and oh, I left out my DX. Let's put our little DX in there. Now, for this one, we would move that constant 5 to the outside, and we are integrating e to the 2x dx plus, and then integrating 1 over x dx. And so we know here, if we integrate e to the 2x, we get e to the 2x, but we have that extra 2 there. So we're going to go out here and cancel that out, and we can show all that by u substitution if need be. Plus, if we integrate 1 over x, we get the natural log of the absolute value of x, and then plus c because we don't have our endpoints, so that's going to be answer choice b. And finally, number 15, we are looking for value of c so that we are continuous at 2. And so really after all the theory and stuff, it really um, comes down to us substituting in this 2 and setting these values equal to each other. So then that's going to be 2 squared plus 2c minus 18. So this is going to be 4 sine of 2 pi minus or equal to 4 plus 2c minus 18. This all is going to be 0 equals negative 14 plus 2c. And so when we solve for c, we're going to get that to be 7. So that's answer choice B.